Tammy's Hammer and Hall Show Yearbook Day, and we're celebrating memories and milestones with award-winning actor extraordinaire Tay Diggs, who's still with us. Is that a wave? <laughs> joining joining the sofa for our class photo is a guest that helped us kick off season four of This Golden Hour as part of the cast of the show y'all know I'm obsessed with, the landmark show, P Valley. Nico Anna from Cass Technical High School in Detroit, Michigan. But like Tay, it's his drive to help others that makes him most likely to make the world a better place. Please welcome his third appearance on our show, the wildly talented 2023 NAACP Image Award winning outstanding actor for a drama series for his role on P-Valley, Nico Anand! <laughs> right fit for the occasion. Baby, you know, when you come to Tamron Hall, you must do right. <laughs> you must do right. I didn't want to do my suit this time. I wanted to, you know, to get the yearbook vibe. Giving me, like you that. know, varsity champion. Okay, 1994. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's pull up the picture. Oh, my God. Oh, please, you, you yeah, look exactly that's, that's the same. That's Baby Luther, baby. That was Baby <laughs> Luther. <laughs> Yes. Back then, you were Nathaniel. <laughs> yes. Nathaniel, Nico on, and you know, everybody just started calling it Nico for short, calling me Nico for short, and I was like, hey, I'm with it, because my check wouldn't cash when... <laughs> when it was... <laughs> so I was like, yeah. Because I wondered, did you take on the Nico as a stage name, but people anointed you Nico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a part of my family name yeah. back in Ghana. Yeah, and so you said, okay, this is, that sounds Hollywood, though. Not that Nathaniel doesn't. Oh, I love Nathaniel. Yeah, it's I, beautiful. It's an elegant name. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? That's what gives me that little extra lift. You know what I'm saying? It's in the Bible and yeah, all that yeah. good stuff. You know, so but I Nico guess. sounds like Hollywood. Uh, I guess. That's some sad. <laughs> Just a little something. Yeah. A little something. A little something. Yeah. All right, so you are um, both, though, ambassadors for a new campaign. It's Me and You, You and Me, presented by Vive Healthcare. Mm -hmm. What I was saying to Tay before the break, you both have gone on to tremendous success, but the quality of people you are is why you're participating in this campaign, to save lives. Mm -hmm. um, why was it, or why is it at this point so important? You're at the high of your... I mean, I know when you were from the stage plays, now you're on TV and everybody wondering when the next season of P Valley is going to mm. finally get here. Mm. But you stop yes. to say... Let me participate in this campaign that is normalizing the conversation about HIV prevention, particularly within black, brown, queer communities that are underserved, mm -hmm. that still have um, disturbingly high percentages, but mm -hmm. are humans, are people, and who should be supported. Yeah. Why was it important for you to do this? Because it's real. Mm -hmm. It's real. I think it's necessary. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? We were talking in so many different ways to have, you know, a heterosexual brother that can come in and be vocal mm -hmm. and use Tay's light. And I wanted to use my light. Uh, we didn't know it, we were each other. Mm -hmm. We were going to be paired with each other. Doing oh, you that didn't know in the campaign? No, that it was anonymous. Mm -hmm. it, it ended up being an experiment. Yeah. Right, we, it's a social... In fact, we yes. have a, a, um, a little clip of it. It's a social experiment. I'm yes, sorry, yes, on. exactly. Yeah. Please never interrupt me again. <laughs> <laughs> Not when the teacher talking. Not when the teacher talking, okay. Tay. Come on. Okay. You, do, okay. you do realize, okay. you do realize I have two of these on this. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let it be known. Let it be known. Let it be known. But, but, it, but you, you paired together. I, I, I'm so excited about this because it was a social experiment. Yes. It was anonymous. It paired you two together. Mm -hmm. I have a clip. Let's play it. What does a world without HIV stigma look like? It already could have been erased. So I'm gonna say it could look like 2023. I don't think it has to be something that's in a distant future. I don't think it has to be in a space of utopia. I think that we have that power to live in that moment right now. Wow. That's the first time I've seen it. Mm. That's the first time I've seen it. That's the first time. See, mm -hmm. I didn't know 
I didn't realize the, the true anonymity that you were walking toward one another mm -hmm. and when you didn't know who mm -hmm. was going to greet you in the middle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, even mm -hmm. in that point right there, we were, we were like blindfolded mm -hmm. when, you know, when we were brought into the studio and stuff like that. We did have a conversation prior to, um, and it was via Zoom or something. It was mm -hmm. online some kind of way, but- I didn't see you, yeah, it was just- Yeah, there was no video, it was just audio. Mm -hmm. And we were just asking questions about like, where are you in life? What are, you, what are your thoughts and things like that? So it allowed us to like kind of strip away how you identify, what you look like, what race you are. I, I knew he like, had some bass yeah. in his voice, uh -huh. you know what I mean? Right. But I didn't know how he identified, you know what I mean? Where he was in the community, where he was in the world. I didn't know if he was a father. Actually, I did because you started talking about uh -huh. being a father. So you knew the there end. was a person you were speaking with, mm -hmm. but you did not recognize his voice? Mm -hmm. Wow. No, because, you know... And I had just seen him the day before at the <laughs> NAACP Awards. Yeah. I'd been like, ah, congratulations. Da, da, da. I think it's because you released wanting to control the situation. Absolutely. And so you're like, I don't know this person. I'm just going to listen to that person mm -hmm. in their heart mm -hmm. versus trying to figure out who that person is. Yeah. Let yeah. them tell me who they are. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And, and then I... Go ahead. Go ahead. Don't interrupt don't me again. <laughs> yeah. I ain't worried about uh... Tay. You can do that if you want to. I ain't worried about you, bro. <laughs> I ain't that, worried about That you. is my payback. I get you for your lunch. Snap <laughs> back at you. Go yes, ahead. Yes. <laughs> Come on, fam. But the questions were constructed in a manner where um, we had no choice but to really delve in. So uh, when we were asking each other these random questions, uh, it didn't matter what, what I thought he might look like or... Mm -hmm. And that almost always matters in, in regular day life. Yeah. You know, when you're having a conversation with somebody, you can't help but just judge them. Do you know what I mean? And then you judging them affects how you understand them. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were able to be, we were able to have this great, these great conversations just based on who we were as people, and it uh, it really it really worked. I yeah. should make this important point, Nico. According to CDC, Black and Latinx communities continue to be disproportionately, as I said, impacted with HIV. Um, black Americans make up 40% of those living with HIV in the country. Mm -hmm. um, how do we, not just you all, but how do we, the people watching, join to make sure that communities affected by HIV um, get this awareness about the prevention and what's available right now? I think part of that is a part of this, the whole mission of the campaign, mm -hmm. you know, and us using our light in that way. I feel like, you know, um, in, in diving into it, I realized that there were, it's like about 11%, I think it is, of black people that are eligible oh. for like PrEP and other medical things that could help with HIV prevention and care receive it. Only 11% out of, or in compared to the 78% of white people, or white gay men specifically, that may receive it. And I think that that's just a huge disproportion. You know, th those, those numbers right there, they don't really match up like that. So for me, with the experiment, how do you just take away all of your stigma and how you think people are, what you think they are, how do you think they represent, regardless of community? Mm -hmm. There are black women that are affected by this illness. There are elders that are affected by this illness. And it's no different to me, in my mind, from diabetes. Mm -hmm. It's akin, we were talking for me, like even in COVID, mm -hmm. we were testing all the time. People were getting they were tested. They on, on street corners. Mm -hmm. You could get tested, but... And now, like, are people getting tested, you know, for HIV? You know, are they getting the medication that they could use in the community? So if we could eradicate the stigma about it, we could help just get on top of this illness and do a better job all together. Well, that's why we have voted the two of you together most likely to change the world. Come on. Come, Come on, on now. Yeah. All right. Yeah, come on. We, we can't do it without you, baby. Thank you. I thought you were going to leave me hanging for this one over here. <laughs> Well, Nico, will you sign the TAM Fam 2023 yearbook? I adore the both of you, and I think you both know that. Yeah. And um, please come back, because season five is around the corner. Okay. We want you back on this chair talking yeah. about what you're working on next. Boom, boom. Hey, D, Nico, Adam, for more information and resources, go to TAM